So yeah, here we are another day. And uh, it's beautiful out there. So um, I've done some work and made some adjustments and some fine tuning on my my um, tablet cage. If you want to know what a tablet cage is, it's I'll show you in the mirror. That's what it is there. That's a tablet cage there. So turn it around. Oh, well, you can't see it on the back side because the camera will be facing me. Um, yeah, that's all I've done is just made a basic cage. So I can go around filming things, can hold it with one hand, can uh, hold it like that. Do that, filming like that, yeah, and holding it around, coming around like that, yeah. So it's just the cage that I can put down. So I, I um, I I fine tune this piece of um. Elastic, so that it can hold the um, stop the thing from falling out. Tablet, three hundred dollars worth of tablet. And I just about smashed it yesterday, so I learnt my lesson. Yeah, let's go. We done some work yesterday. It was more tidying up than work. And we can check the vegetables. See how the vegetables are going. What's under the cover? What's under the cover is a ninja Kawasaki 650. You can see that. Another one of my babies. Hey. Another baby there. Jeep Wrangler and another one of my babies there. Hara. Hara Mountain Bike. Ryobi Pencil. Right at the back there there's another pencil. Just a little one. Over there, and then I got a welding machine behind that Ryobi box. A little drill there that I found on the side of the road. Yeah, yeah. Pig weighing scales. Here's my, there's our boy. Hey yo. Hey yo, this boy. High five. High five. See, going through the side gate. <laughs> haven't done anything more to that side of the thing but I have taken the frame, the tarp off like I dropped that yesterday um, did a bit of tidy up in here put all that water in that fadge finally moved that chair back to there, put the table saw over, bench saw over there put that over there so yeah Getting there. Hello, vegetables. Good morning. Stood that. I stood that one up over there because that one was flopped over. So I propped that up with a bit of dirt. And um, 
The bottom ones haven't come up seeds yet. Some beans in there that'll come up. More growth overnight. That's over overnight growth. That. So I'd say about two, maybe three centimeters worth of growth. And, um, that's spinach. Doing well, pumping. Oh, look at how these flowers have taken off in there. That's that's encouraging. They look really, really well. Oh, nice. Nice. Standing up. Girls looking pretty. Not as pretty as they can be, though, because those are flowers. And when they start showing their colours, oh my god. Bring those bees around, babies. Look at how much these lettuces have grown. They are pumping, flourishing, thriving. Broad beans, can't wait for the broad beans to come on. I love broad beans. That centre one there, it's just pumping, coming up. And the silver bead on the side. I think they'd build, they'll, they'll be compatible um, um, plant mates. <coughs> You see what? A, oh, my father he um he liked planting a garden, but the thing was about his garden. Oh, one day he um there was a program <coughs> there was a program that was called Dig This. I think he read the book. He didn't see it on TV, but it said um plant compatibility. Now to understand the science of plant compatibility is um one plant like say silver beet will take certain nutrients out of the ground and say radishes that haven't come up yet will take another nutrients out of the ground so where you planted the radishes this year next year you'll plant the spinach and you'll plant the radishes where you planted the spinach and then potatoes take one another ingredient out of the ground. So next year you wouldn't plant your potatoes in the same place you'd plant silver beet there. Because it'll replace some certain nutrients into the ground. So you keep rotating your vegetables like that. And if you've got... Oh, so silver beet and spinach are similar in the same type of structure and stuff, leaf structure and everything. You see, they might be competing for the same nutrients in the soil. So, I don't know whether they'd have a good chance, but we've got two sets of silver beet. Those little ones in there. And these ones over here. And those are beside parsley and chives. So I don't know if they'll take the same nutrients out of the ground. But... That's what plant compatibility is. Quite interesting, eh? I reckon that's neat. So yeah, it's looking a little bit more, like got a, a lot more wide open space in, in, in that area there. We can walk through clear without tripping over the things and falling over stuff. Got my homemade wheelbarrow there. Love my homemade wheelbarrow. We gotta get this table out of here. It's falling over anyway. So everything on there and in there has got to come out of there and that's gotta move out of the way. I might be able to restructure it and prop it up, but I've got so many tables and stuff uh, it's not funny. Um yeah, so Still got to, I just about put my back out last night launching that stuff into the middle because I want to get that pile, that pile of stuff there out of there and really, really clean that little area up there. So all of that stuff's going up onto that pile, the centre pile. 
we'll just call that the center pile. And this is another fish that's ready for my mate Ian to come and pick up. And our boy is just relaxing out through a nice spot. You find a nice spot, did you? Eh? Yeah? Oi. Kaha. Hello. Kaha. Hello. What are you going on? Oh, I'm sorry. What's going on? Reading the news. Winding. Winding again. Look at him. His nose is up in the air. What's happening, my boy? He's hidden his bone in there for the last couple of days, so that's why. And eventually, rather sooner than later, we're going to get in here into this corner. Look, look at this. Can you see the gem in, in amongst those leaves? Here it is, see. Eh? Here it is, see. Eh? See that? Yeah, that's it there. Yeah, see it now. It's another, another spinach. I'm going to get the. See? It's got his bone. I still haven't found his collar. Hey, whoa, I'm gonna stand this up. So I don't stand in it. I know where his crap is, it's right there. So we're not going to stand in that, we're going to clean that up soon. Uh, do not balance the tablet on the corner with that there. Hunting for his shite. Looking for his dog collar. I don't know how that could have come off. There's somewhere around here. Twelve minutes. Can't wait to see the veggies grow up out of there. Up over that frame. It's going to be cool. Can't wait to build something out of this. That's going to be cool. Can't wait to see the yard transformation really cleared all of that. All of that's going to be cleared. One skip in one day, just buffing everything into it. We'll do it. Just got to get it around that corner and in that driveway. I'm borrowing someone's trailer and do two runs, three runs. I don't know how that's going to turn out, but yeah. So, that is the day's work, that is the day's work there, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're definitely getting there. Oh, it's wonderful to finally have some fine days, consecutive days after day after day. So, um... So yeah, so we can keep plodding along at it, keep punching away at it. Otherwise you get a day and then it rains and you, oh, then you lose interest and you get lethargic and yeah. Yeah. But I like this little section, although I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here because the rent gets increased every 
12 months and they do because they can and only because they can not for the last five years have they have they said oh no nah, it's all good we're not going to raise the rent this year no way and 60 dollars every year on oh, one the last year was 25 dollars for me because i've been here for eight years but I always expect the worst. Always expect the worst. If they raise it by another sixty dollars just this year, I, I don't think I'll be able to live here. I don't know where I'm going to live. I'll, me and my dog jump in the truck and pick a bridge, any bridge. That's the way it's. That's the way it is. The world. And they don't care. They do not care. They want their money, landlords. Landlords are the worst. You say lawyers and accountants are the bloodsuckers of the world. Fuck no. No, they're not. Landlords. Landlords. They're the blood-sucking maggots on the fucking planet. And they love it. They're just smiling all jiggly and juggly about themselves too. Proud they've got that rental property. Finally got that and just rape, reaping it in. Fucking reaping it. They don't care. They just look at that and think, oh, they've finally done it, they finally made it. On goes the rent. I know someone who says he's, he had rental property since 2001. And he hasn't raised the rent since, not in all that time. But then I saw a story on Fair Go. The landlord, the owner, didn't raise the rent, but the property brokers did. Without even the owners knowing that they raised the rent. So if they didn't know that the rent was raised, that means that the property brokers took 100% of the increase. Yeah, bit of an issue, bit of an issue. Like I say, man, but I, I got my own work to do. I don't know. I've got until two weeks before Christmas. Every Christmas, happy Christmas. Here's your rent raise. Landlords, you want to know who the true blood suckers on this planet are? Landlords. I'll leave you with that sour taste in your mouth. Yeah. We're getting there. We are getting there. So another little job I've got to do is um, <coughs> cutting these bones down. One bone. Three bones. Four bones. Would you like to watch me? So I'm going to do it over there. It's just a matter of finding a good place for this. Um, where it isn't going to fall. Maybe not, maybe not, I'll just take some photos of it now, and during the process. So it's me, I'll cut the bone. I've got it down to mostly what I want them to be. So there they are there. Make it that pencil. Massive, it's pretty cool man. That wire be. What a mean investment. 
one of those things that I just so happened to have the cash on me at the time and I walked in and I saw and I thought I'm going to have it you're coming home with me but that's them basically cut down to how I want them now for the next stage it's a lot of work but another progress another work in progress So here we go again. Back into it. Getting into some mahi. Some work. I think my boy has to go back and pee. Stay there. Stay there. Back in there. Come on. So I just cleaned up his pen. I think he knows he's got to go back in because I just I got um I got a I gotta have free access in and out the gate. So I can move freely and get more done instead of opening and closing the gate every time. Come on, get up here. Windy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And I love you too. I love you too. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. So we open up the gate now. Gonna get a delivery soon. New Zealand Post. New Zealand Post. New Zealand Post is coming. Gonna drop me off a multi port, a USB port, USB plug. Plugs into the USB port and it's got four USB ports on it. It's multi port. There you go. And pretty good. Be pretty good when I get it. Mm. So I cut up some tonga this morning. Took some photos of that. Actually, I'll bring them out now.
thinking about doing another one out of this, but I'll, I might make it just one piece. Try and do something 3D-ish with this, this flat being there. We'll see. I was just, uh, I was going to, I was going to cut it flat about there, but I might be able to get something unique out of that so and if I can do that with that one then I can do that with others this is just an off cut it's just an off cut but still make a nice little piece be bottom heavy it gets gets way for thin up this end so I don't know, I don't know if there's enough bone there to, I don't know if there's enough bone there, I mean there is on this side, but, I don't know, being that it's bottom heavy it'll sit nicer, it'll, it'll sit nicer in the, in the pocket, we'll see, we'll see what we can get out of that, that's still a nice piece though, real thick through here real thick that'll make a nice tongue this is another one might be a hair pin more oriental with with the shape of it not like a hairu but it's got some it's kind of clear through there and just white bone there but another couple of off cuts hard to see what that'll be but it might be more of a tool for scraping harakeke or something something else this is another off cut, real thick. So there's be a nice tongue with that one. Again, thin through there, and it's got that porous part of the bone through there. That'll just get grounded right off. I'll cut it, cut straight through like that, through there with the bandsaw blade. Pretty wrapped about these. Oh, and this is another one. Hard to see what that's going to turn into, but it's got a lot of porous through here, but it's still relatively thick through here. It's thin over there, but it's a nice thin. It's like almost a, um, a talented, a show of talent to be able to carve that thin a bone in detail and to show off the skills but I think that part that part there will come off that part there will come off so that might dictate the next cut which possibly will be straight through there and you get one piece from there and one piece from that which that's a nice little curve that nice little face yeah to get something out nice out of that so yeah that's uh that's what the tonga the tonga are looking like it's them laid out there Definitely get some nice pieces out of those. Almost like to see them like that, like set up on a bench, like walk into the workshop and see them on the, and without touching them possibly for months, just keep looking at them and looking at them and look, looking at them until I see something in them. 
But there's a reason why I've cut them flat like that. Because I've got a plan for these. These six. And um, it's a big plan. It might take a year or two to finish it, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see, yeah, so that's, the, um, I like them better a bit spread out, but I was just trying to show you that those five or six are going to come together. to the Lord cha cha then this is my workshop so I wish I had a workshop I wish I had a workshop Hiding place. So, we got a plan to do. You see that long pole up there? Well, it's going to be a project that I'm going to start now. So, I'm going to turn it off. Oh, I did get to shoveling some. This, this is looking a little bit cleaner over here. I've still got a little bit more work over here to do. Yeah, so I'll just carry on doing my thing. I'll show you what I've done at the end of the day.
So here it is. That's the vane and the propeller. I brought the pole down, so. I wonder if it'll work. Might have to make some adjustments to it. It's not much of a wind going at the moment, but we'll see.